it can not be denied that this way of thinking has often led parents to hurry their daughters into the matrimonial bond even at a premature age it is perhaps the very same mentality buttressed by quasi religious theories that has crystallized into such practices as early marriage and child marriage enforced by social compulsion that this was not so in the early history of hindu society is clear from the fact that just like boys girls also used to be educated in forest universities some of which at least were run on coeducational lines in fact the theory of compulsory pre puberty marriage for girls of the higher caste came into popularity only along with a change in the conception of women's education in early aryan society and it is also recognized by the orthodox smritis girls like boys were invested with the sacred thread at the proper age and subsequently initiated into vedic study and aryan religious life the condition that existed in the aryan society in the early days is well reflected in the following verse from the smriti of yama pura kalpe kumarinam monji bandhan mishyate adhyapanancha vedanam savitri vachanam tatha in former ages girls were invested with the sacred thread upnayan they could teach the vedas and repeat the savitri mantra these words however could not be found in the present editions of yama smriti that we consulted but it is quoted by madhvacharya an author of great standing in orthodox circles in his commentary on parashar samhita page number 83 bombay sanskrit series edition madhavas purpose in quoting it is only to discourage upnayan at present by pointing out that such concessions were applicable only to the distant ages of the past kalpas according to puranic computations but to a mind endowed with a historical sense it is a positive proof of the full educational and religious equality allowed to women it is also known from ancient literature that women performed vedic sacrificial rites like men See Ramayana where Kaushalya performs swasti yag alone and where Sita twice discloses her discharging religious duties in the morning and evening like men even Jaimini quotes Badrayan to show that women could perform vedic sacrifices now the recognition of this automatically presupposes invest teacher with the sacred thread and vedic education according to altikar why these women in hindu civilization women enjoyed these religious privileges more or less till the beginning of the christian era but changes were gradually coming in at 500 bc as we may gather from harita a few women brahmavadinis made an intensive study of the vedas after upnayan while the majority of the girls sadhyo vadus underwent the formality of the ceremony shortly before marriage the brahmavadinis did not marry but followed the ascetic life many centuries later manu in manu smriti chapter 2 verse 66 favored women's upnayan without the reciting of vedic mantras still letter writers like yajyavalkya 200 ad advocated the more straightforward course of prohibiting the ceremony altogether it is interesting to note in this connection that among the parsis zoroastrians a branch of the ancient vedic aryans the ceremony is still performed for girls how long their education continued one can not say but modern scholars believe that marriage did not come in the way of it in so far as the vedic hymns chanted and the marriage rituals and practices followed indicate that both the contracting parties 
were adults.